Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to make my own laminate countertops. We decided to make our own countertops and there was a couple reasons why we wanted to do this. First, the biggest one is I like to save money and if I did it myself, I figured I could get exactly what I wanted and save a bunch of money. And second, I like to DIY, so why not make your own countertops? For materials, it's actually pretty simple. We picked up some laminate from our local hardware store. I believe it was a five foot by 12 or 16 foot roll that we could cut into the sizes we need. And then for the actual base, it's gonna be MDF and a little bit of pine board for the structure that the laminate will glue to. And then you use contact cement to glue it all together. All right, so I'm gonna go and get started and build some countertops. DIY laminate countertops is definitely an affordable countertop option that you can do at home. We have done DIY laminate countertops a couple times now, including in our laundry room and in our RV kitchen. We've always been really happy with the results, so we're gonna share all the tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. So this is actually the top piece of our countertop. This is the bottom side of it, and I'm using a bunch of scrap MDF that I had around the garage, but the bottom side is a full piece so that we have a nice flat surface to glue the laminate countertop to, and this is just the underside. I'm adding this piece of wood here on the edge. This is where I'm gonna connect the waterfall edge, so I wanted some nice structure. So the next step here is to glue this all up. This size here is actually a little bit bigger than what I need, but I did that so that after my glue up, I can take my track saw and square off all the edges. So when I go to put my laminate countertop on, I'll have nice clean edges. Thicknesses of countertops vary, but for laminate counters, they're generally around an inch and a half thick. For the overhang of the countertop, this is generally an inch and a half, but you can customize this amount also depending on your layout and specific needs. On the other countertop, we added two full layers of MDF, but this isn't necessary. You can also get away with doing just a two to three inch wide perimeter around the underside edges. So the countertop, we're just trying to fit it. I do it this way, because if your wall isn't square to the cupboard, even if you cut this as a square slab and then you go to slide it up, or sometimes walls will have a slight bow to them, then you can scribe it. I only want like an eighth of an inch overhang on this edge. So I'll scribe this line here and then add eighth of an inch to it in the shop. And then that should give me this depth, this line by half inch and cut it out and then it should slide tight in the wall. Then once we get it to slide tight to the wall, make sure this line is good and see if I have to take any out. And if that's good, then we can cut the front off and we'll have a perfect fit. Nice. One of the countertops we had had a waterfall edge. To build this, we added a vertical piece on the side and braced it on the back. Start by cutting all your laminate down to the size of your countertop, adding one to two inches of overhang on all the sides. There are multiple options for cutting your laminate, including a router and a scoring knife, but what I found easiest was to use a cordless cutoff saw with a grinding wheel. I am cutting some strips. This is just gonna go like on the edge of the countertop. Um, because the laminate was so thin, when I was running against the fence, it was actually going under the fence, which isn't good when you're trying to do a straight line um, for safety and for accuracy. So I just put a piece of tape on and now um, it goes a lot easier and you can just kind of ride the laminate against the tape and you get nice, safe, clean cuts. My next step is to add the laminate to these surfaces. I don't have a piece that's big enough to kind of wrap the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do is have these strips 
and I'm gonna miter them on my miter saw and then have it glue up like this with a 45 and then have one on the bottom with a 45 that meets and I think that should give it a really nice finish and look. We have our pieces cut and we are ready to attach them to our countertop. So the first step to that is to take some contact cement and apply it to these faces here and then let it sit for 15 minutes and you're gonna know when it's ready when it kind of goes from the glossy color from when you first apply it to a dull color. Don't forget if you're using contact cement, you should be using a respirator because the fumes are not good for you. We got these all glued in place, and so we have a bit of overhang on the top and bottom, and that's what you want. So the next step is to get your router with a flush trim bit, and you just want it so this is sticking up a little bit. You don't have too much of the knife exposed, otherwise you run the risk of scoring. So you just have a little bit sticking out, and then you're gonna run counterclockwise around your piece to get rid of all the excess material. Because we're using a router bit, it's gonna leave a radius in this corner. So to get rid of the radius, you just take a file and you slowly go in at an angle and you can clean both sides up. And then you have a nice 90 degree corner. When you're trimming the laminate on the top of your countertop, you want to be careful to use the correct bit so you don't damage the edges of laminate you've already added. We used the wrong type of bit for this countertop and you can see that the edges are scratched and scored and we ended up having to redo all these. We recommend this flush trim router bit which will be linked in the description box below. Another trick that helps when cutting the edges of the laminate is to add a little bit of Vaseline. This prevents the contact cement from building up on the router bit and lets the router bit glide smoothly. If you're working with larger or more intricate pieces of laminate, you may need to consider putting something between your layers of contact cement before you adhere everything. Because contact cement only sticks to itself, you can put something like wooden dowels or cardboard in between the layers of contact cement before you set it to make sure that everything is in place and aligned properly. Also having a second set of hands will help with bigger pieces of laminate. If the contact cement on your laminate makes contact with the contact cement on your countertop and it's in the incorrect position, you will likely wreck your laminate trying to remove it. And I may know this from experience.
We were really happy with how these countertops turned out. It was affordable, custom to the space, and definitely worth the time to DIY. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below and make sure you subscribe for more great budget-friendly tutorials.